episode number five for the Sheep and Goat Topics podcast, and I am Dr. Mike Neary, Extension Small Ruminant Specialist, Purdue University. The topic today is pasture bloat in sheep and goats. We will cover how bloat occurs, how to prevent it, and how to treat bloat if it does occur. This is the time of year for spring grazing turnout which also coincides with one of the most likely times to experience pasture bloat in sheep and goats. Pasture bloat is also referred to as frothy bloat and is the most common type of bloat affecting ruminant animals. There is also a type of bloat entitled free gas bloat or feedlot bloat and another type affecting young lambs or kids being raised artificially called abomasal bloat. We will concentrate on frothy or pasture bloat in this particular podcast. First, let's discuss how bloat occurs. Under normal conditions, a sheep or goat consumes feedstuffs, and they go through an extensive fermentation and digestion in the ruminal area of the gut. Some of the byproducts of this digestion are CO2 and methane gases. Normally, these gases are then released as the animal eructates and cause no issues. When the gas is not able to be released, then it builds up in the rumen and puts pressure on the animal's rumen, lungs, and eventually the heart. Conditions that most commonly cause pasture bloat are a high intake of an immature legume like alfalfa, red clover, white clover, or ladino clover. Other forages can cause pasture bloat, but these are the most likely. The high intake, the highly degradable protein content, the very digestible starch of these forages, and the rapid digestion rate can cause the formation of a stable froth in the liquid portion of the rumen. This froth can layer on top of the liquid. It can also coat the gas bubbles with foam and generally become interspersed in the liquid portion of the rumen. Think of it like taking a drinking straw and blowing air into a glass of liquids and seeing the air bubbles rise to the top and bursting. With frothy bloat conditions, the gas bubbles cannot burst, therefore there is a buildup of gas and pressure. Bloat is not difficult to diagnose. The most obvious sign is a full stomach on the left side of the animal. The challenge for producers, however, at spring turnout is to decide if it is either one an animal simply very full of forage, or two, an animal experiencing some mild bloat, or three, an animal that has experienced a severe bloat that needs some attention. Other symptoms that will help make these decisions are a very severe distension on the left side of the animal. If the distension is high and tight, it's probably a bloat case that needs attention. Kicking at stomach and stamping feet. This shows the pressure of the gas is really making them uncomfortable. Staggering and uncoordinated. This is a symptom that the animal is in real distress. Respiratory distress, fast breathing, labored breathing, tongue out, head and neck extended indicate real problems breathing and the animal most likely needs quick relief. And lastly, if the animal is down and unable to rise, this is a real emergency, and if not treated quickly, they will most likely die. So by far the best strategy with bloat is to prevent it. Prevention strategies can be be focused on both pasture conditions and on animal management. Pasture management can include things like knowing the species that most likely cause bloat. As mentioned earlier, alfalfa, red clover, White clover, ladino clover are some of them. Keep the level of these bloat causing legumes to less than about 50% of the plant population in the pasture. 30 to 40% would be more ideal. These legumes are excellent forages. They are nutritional, palatable, they also fixate nitrogen. Uh, They just have to be managed to prevent bloat. Another strategy is to use legume known to be non bloating. Bird's foot trefoil. Some varieties of vetch, some lespedezas, are examples. These non-bloating legumes have condensed tannins, which slows the rate of digestion in the rumen and considerably lessens the chance of a frothy bloat. At first turnout, when the forages are immature, easily digested, 
and ravenously consume, try to select a pasture with a lower level of bloating legumes contained in them. Once animals are acclimated to spring grass and the legumes in other pastures are more mature, bloat can still be an issue, but the likelihood is lessened. Uh, some things we can do with our animals, strategy-wise, to try to prevent bloat are, one, use an anti-foaming agent such as paloxylene for about three to five days before turnout. It is often contained in a mineral block, commonly referred to as a bloat block, and it is an ingredient animals can consume to prevent the formation of the froth in the rumen. Feed it as the only source of salt or mineral during this time period. Don't forget to check the copper content if you're using it on sheep. Uh, two, don't turn out animals that are ravenously hungry. Try to fill them up on dry hay before turnout. Three, do not turn out sheep or goats early in the morning when dew is still on the grass. The moisture in the forage increases the rate of intake, the rate of digestion, and this increases the risk of bloat occurring. Uh, fourth, a number of sources on preventing bloat suggest introducing animals to a pasture for a short but increasing time period over a period of days to acclimate them to the new feed stores. I disagree with this tactic as it just encourages a feast and famine pattern of forage intake which actually increases the chance of bloat. Put them on the pasture, let them get acclimated, leave them on the pasture and let their feed intake level off over time. Uh, fifthly, watch animals closely for the first few hours when turned onto a pasture with a high level of legumes. The first few hours are when bloat is most likely to occur. Continue to monitor closely for a few days after spring turnout. Not that bloat can't occur to, at other times of the grazing season, but early is the most likely time period when bloat occurs. And then lastly, animals that are chronic bloaters can be removed from the pasture. There is evidence that the propensity to bloat has a genetic basis. Therefore, chronic bloaters should be culled and none of their offspring kept back as breeders. Let's talk a little bit about animals, uh, treating animals that actually get bloat. We try to prevent it, but occasionally a good plan and strategy to prevent bloat, uh, you can still get some individual cases of bloat. Uh, severe, firstly, severe frothy bloat is a life-threatening situation. It doesn't take very long for an animal experiencing bloat to be in a real serious situation. In unmonitored situations, many times, the first thing a producer finds when bloat has occurred is a dead animal. This is why it's imperative that animals are closely monitored early in the introduction to a new pasture. This is when they are most likely to bloat, and if it occurs, prompt action is required. Sheep or goats that are bloating are best treated orally with an anti-foaming agent. There are a number of commercial products available. A few examples are uh, Therabloat, which actually contains paloxylene, which helps break, break up and disperse the froth. Another product would be Dervet Bloat Treatment, which contains an anti-foaming agent. And then another one is Ruminese, which contains soybean oil and emulsifiers that aid in breaking down the froth. Uh, use these products as recommended by the manufacturer. It really is a good idea to have a few bottles on hand in case of an emergency. Hopefully you won't need them, but be, you'll be very glad you have them in case of a bloat case and only 20 or 30 minutes to do something before the animal dies. A number of oils like peanut oil, corn oil, soybean oil, and even mineral oil can serve as an anti-foaming agent. They are best administered via a stomach, a stomach tube into the rumen. A half inch garden hose with all metal removed can serve as a stomach tube in the case of bloat, either to try to relieve the gas or to administer any anti-foaming agents. Just be sure not to get the tube into the lungs or you will literally drown the animal. Try to keep the mouth of the animal below the eyes when inserting the tube to lessen the chances of it getting in the lungs. A potential problem with use of a stomach tube is it can get clogged with the froth and not allow gas to escape. In cases like this, anti-foaming agents will have to be used. In very severe emergency cases, 
where animal death is imminent without immediate intervention, a ruminotomy can be performed. This is basically puncturing the rumen by puncturing through the skin and muscles. Using a trocar is best in a case like this, and complications can occur. If a ruminotomy is required, absolutely to save the animal's life, uh, it would be very good to seek veterinary attention for that animal to help prevent peritonitis and further infections. In summary, try to prevent pasture blow by pasture and forage management, timely introduction of animals to pasture, the use of paloxylene as a preventative, and paying close attention to animals when bloat conditions are likely. Be prepared for bloat in case it happens in individual animals. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sheep and Goat Topics. If you found it useful, please subscribe, rate the podcast, and tell your friends. 